Um, pasensya na ha, at um, we can only meet two hours today kasi meron kami conference by 7 p.m. So, um, let's pick up the discussion kung saan tayo um, tumigil. Ang review lang natin na yung periodic table, it's arranged in such a way that you can predict the characteristics of the element according to their position in the periodic table. So, ibig sabihin nun, kung alam mo nasan siya sa periodic table, mahulaan mo, is it reactive? Will it um, behave in a particular way relative to combination with other elements? So, um, review na lang natin na always magkapareha ang trend ng ionization energy at saka electron affinity. Kung sinabi natin ionization energy, ito yung energy na kailangan mo para magtanggal ng isang electron sa electron cloud ng isang atom. So, ibig sabihin yung mga elements na nasa upper right ng inyong periodic table, sila yung pinakamahirap tanggalan ng electron kasi kailangan mo sobrang daming energy. Electron affinity, ibig sabihin yan, ano yung kagustuhan ng isang element na kumuha ng electron. So, ang ating rule dyan would be the octet rule. Ano ibig sabihin ng octet rule? Ibig sabihin, para maging stable ang isang element when it's ionized, kailangan niya magkaroon ng 8 electrons in its outermost shell. So, yung may pinakamataas na electron affinity would be those that are um, in the upper right, um, particularly the halogen group. Kasi isa na lang yung kulang nila na electron dahil ang valence nila ay 7, no? 7 yung electrons na nasa outer shell. Isa na lang yung kailangan nila maging stable na sila. So, um, logically, sila yung may pinakamataas na electron affinity. Yung atomic radius ay nag increase as you go down and to the left of the periodic table. Bakit? Kasi yung valence ng isang um, element on the left and lower portion of the periodic table is just one. Ano? So ibig sabihin hindi siya nahihila paloob ng electron cloud kaya siya malaki. Um, the non-metallic character increases as you go to the right. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, yung mga non-metals nasa um, representative group of the right side. They usually have the P valence and yung mga metals, they have usually the S valence and they are located on the left of the periodic table. So, that metallic character goes um, increases as you go to the left. Okay? So, wala, ulitin ko lang guys, wala pang board exam ng pharma na wala itong question on the periodic trend. Okay? So, having known the electron configuration at saka yung mga properties ng periodic table, we now go into forces of attraction. So, bakit ba nagiging compound ang dalawang element? na um, sakto yung um, electron configurations. Bakit sila naging compound? Bakit yung mga molecules na um, highly polar, they behave in such a way? What about those molecules na polar? Bakit um, ganito yung behavior nila? Um, that will be explained by forces of attraction. So basically, meron tayong dalawang klase ng forces of attraction. Um, Ano lang, simple, simple lang, intramolecular, ibig sabihin ano yung force that is present between the atoms in a molecule, within a molecule. And next would be intermolecular force, um, that would be the force of attraction between molecules. So ibig sabihin, um, you have, for example, a protein and its relationship with uh, glucose. Okay, so example in the blood or in plasma. 
um, the force that is present between a protein and between that of glucose, that is an intermolecular force. So later on, um, i-describe natin ano yung mga klase ng intermolecular forces. So ulitin ko, intra, nasa loob, inter, in between, okay? Uh, molecules. Intramolecular, between atoms, take note, between atoms in a molecule. Intermolecular force, between molecules in a solution or in its tube. Okay, so let's first tackle intramolecular forces of attraction. Intramolecular forces of attraction. So you have two types. Um, depende lang kung ano yung klase ng element na nag-combine. So um, you can have an ionic interaction or a covalent interaction. Pag sinabi natin ionic interaction, there is a transfer of electrons. So element 1 will give off an electron and the one that combines with element 1 will take up that electron. So that's an ionic molecular force. There is a transfer of electrons. Bakit siya ionic? Kasi when an element gives off an electron, it becomes positively charged. So a positively charged ion is a cat ion and the one that receives the electron becomes negatively charged. And so that ion is an anion, negatively charged. So um, ionic interactions occur when there is a large difference in electronegativity. Uulitin ko kasi very important for the boards when there is a large difference in electronegativity. So, ibig sabihin yan, yung isang, at, yung isang atom in the compound will really want to throw away the electron. At saka yung isa naman will really want to accept the electron. So, ulitin ko, ionic um, molecular force, there is a large difference greater than 2 in electronegativity. Ulitin ko, large difference in electronegativity. That will be a value of greater than 2. Please remember, greater than 2. Okay? Um, patok na question sa board exam. Covalent naman ang ating intramolecular force when there is a sharing of electrons. Ulitin ko, when there is a sharing of electrons. Ano ibig sabihin? Um, between two atoms, the electrons will just spin around the valence shell and transfer to the valence shell of the corresponding atom in the compound. So, nandun lang siya sa rim ng, ng cloud, yung valence orbital, nandun lang siya. And then it will transfer to the valence shell also of the next atom in the compound. Hindi siya um, there is no distinct, definite transfer. There is just a sharing. So, kapag dadaan dito sa outermost portion, yung electron pupunta sa kabilang mm -hmm. atom, babalik na naman siya kung saan siya nanggaling. Okay? So, iikot-ikot na siya. Kaya ang ating, um, ang ating representation when we write uh, the electron uh, configuration would be tutuldok. tutuldok. So there is, take note, ang difference natin, ionic, malaki yung pagkakaiba ng electronegativity. Sa covalent, minimal difference in electronegativity. So um, we will often find covalent interactions between two nonmetals. Ulitin ko, two nonmetals. Ibig sabihin, two elements at the right side of the periodic table. When the compound, you see, contains two elements in the right side of the periodic table, ibig sabihin, they are um, magkakadikit lang ang kanilang electronegativity, we can predict um, that they will interact in a covalent manner. They will interact in a covalent manner. So, 
Ito naman, very important for um, module 1, orbitals in a covalent interaction will overlap. Orbitals will overlap. Last time, orbitals will overlap in a covalent interaction. So, um, recap lang natin, ionic interaction, the metals will lose the electron. Ulitin ko, the metals will lose the electron and the non-metals will accept the electron. Okay? So there is um, a single electron loss from the valence shell. Ionic, isa lang yung electron na nata-transfer. Isa lang ang electron na nata-transfer from the metal at tatanggapin ng non-metal. Okay? Um, most of the time, these are observed between alkali metals, group 1, at saka the halogens, group 7. So kung mapapansin nyo, yung um, alkali metals, gusto nilang magtapon ng isang electron, at saka ang um, halogens, gusto nilang tumanggap ng isang electron. So kaya um, always natin makikita, sodium chloride, sodium fluoride, potassium chloride, so, sila ay um, perfect pair for each other, yung um, alkali and halogens. Okay? Isa pang question sa boards would be, um, what group, ibig sabihin what column in the periodic table, um, generally tastes salty? Okay? Pag um, tinanong yun sa boards, maalat, ibig sabihin any compound, that contains a halogen, halide means salt. No? So any compound that contains a halogen, you can predict that it will taste salty. Okay? So yung na-discuss na din natin in the previous um, session that if there is a, um, if there is a um, more or less equal sharing of the electrons, in a covalent interaction. Ulitin ko, kapag equal yung pagpartition ng electrons in a covalent interaction, they will almost always be nonpolar. Ulitin ko, equal sharing covalent interaction will produce a nonpolar covalent compound. Nonpolar equal sharing. Polar if it's unequal. So, kung i-rank natin siya, ito din yung question sa boards. They will give you a series of interactions and you're going to rank them based on um, difference in electronegativity. So, pinaka-konte yung difference in electronegativity, non-polar, followed by polar, and then last would be the ionic interaction. So, ulitin ko, from least to greatest difference in electronegativity, Non-polar covalent, polar covalent, and then ionic. Okay? So na-explain natin last time na kapag polar covalent, they share electrons. But because one atom in the compound is more electronegative, the electrons that float around that atom, yung uh, magpapaligid sa atom na yan, will tend to slow down the spin of the cloud such that more electrons will parang tatambay sila at that particular atom before they go back kung saan sila nanggaling. So, because of that, we have the dipole moment or the dipole interaction. So, ibig sabihin nun, um, there will be, sorry may mga aso, there will be a particular instance of partial positivity and partial negativity. You have a partial positive pole and a partial negative pole. Okay? So, kuha yun, ionic and covalent. Okay. Ngayon naman, we, we, we will be talking of the intermolecular forces of attraction. Kanina, yung ionic and covalent, they are intramolecular forces of attraction. 
Ngayon, we'll be talking of the intermolecular forces of attraction. The forces that are found between two molecules. Okay? Intermolecular force of attraction. Yung infa, ito yung sa physical pharmacy ninyo na ina-abbreviate as infa, the intermolecular force of attraction. They are also known as van der Waals interactions. So, ulitin ko, board exam question, pag sinabing van der Waals, okay, but, uh, van der Waals, so yun yung pag-pronounce kung gusto mong tumama ng spelling, van der Waals, but if you're going to um, pronounce it in German, <laughs> talaga, it's van der Waals, van der Waals. Um, these are intermolecular forces of attraction. So, meron tayong tatlo. Okay? Um, actually, marami pa, but the most common would be these three. So, take note, lalabas always ito, yung mga monikers nila. Ano yung other name of the particular van der, uh, van der Waals? Ano yung um, other name niya? So when you say key som interaction, key som interaction, that would be dipole dipole interaction. Ulitin ko, key som interaction is a dipole dipole interaction. Ibig sabihin, one molecule is a dipole and it will interact with another dipole. So ano yung dipole? Sila yung mga molecules or compounds whose covalent interaction produces unequal sharing of the electrons. Ulitin ko, sulat niya sa notebook, a dipole is a compound or molecule whose covalent interaction creates unequal sharing of the electrons. So, anong ibig sabihin ng unequal? Ulitin ko na naman. There will be an atom that will pull the electrons and that atom will be the partial negative pole. And kung sino yung hinilaan ng electron, that will become your partial positive pole. So that will be your dipole. Okay? So when you say dipole, dipole interaction or the keystone interaction, ang, tao, ang nangyayari dyan, yung positive uh, partial pole ng isang molecule will interact with the partial negative pole of another molecule. So yung positive ng isa, mag-a-align or mag-o-orient with the negative ng isang molecule. So um, they will form a linear interaction. So later on, I will explain anong ibig sabihin ng mga kilocalories na nandito. Next would be the D-by interaction. D-by interaction, also known as the dipole-induced dipole interaction. D-by, okay, huwag kalimutan, lalabas yung other names sa dipole-induced dipole interaction. So, kanina na-explain na natin yung dipole. Ano? There is unequal sharing of the electrons, creating a partial positive and a partial negative pole. Pag sinabi natin induced dipole, anong nangyayari? Yung molecule originally wala siyang partial positive pole at wala siyang partial negative pole. It is nonpolar. Okay? D by dipole induced dipole. Yung induced dipole, it is originally nonpolar. Okay? But what happens? There is an atom that is very electronegative. Okay? There is an atom that is very electronegative or very electropositive in the case of the metals. So, ito yung atom na yun na very electronegative or very electropositive. And ito yung inyong nonpolar na molecule. Pag siya ay dumapli doon, so, kapag siya ay lumapit sa nonpolar molecule, because of its strong electrostatic force, eto, because of its strong electrostatic force, even if this is nonpolar, 
the electrons of the constituent atoms will tend to rush towards that side. So basically, nonpolar siya, but because of this very electronegative atom, it will pull even the electrons of that nonpolar molecule, and you will create a partial negative pole here. So you have induced a dipole. Okay, konyon. So, balik tayo. D by, you have a dipole originally, and then you have an induced dipole, which was originally nonpolar. So they will interact via induction. Yung dipole or yung very electronegative molecule will induce the creation of a dipole from a nonpolar molecule. Okay, koha yon. So napag-usapan natin kisom at saka dibay. Ngayon, we will go to the London dispersion force. Yung patok na patok sa board exam will be the London dispersion force. Okay? Huwag kalimutan, London dispersion force. Okay. okay. So, ang other name ng inyong London dispersion force would be the induced dipole, induced dipole. Okay? Ulitin ko. Kapag dalawang induced dipole, yung participant molecules, we call them the London dispersion force. Okay? Yung force in between them. So, um, you should recall how an induced dipole is formed. When you have two induced dipoles, we form the London dispersion force. So, ang characteristic ng inyong London force would be these molecules innately okay, within them they have very weak um, electrostatic force. London dispersion, very weak electrostatic force. Nagkakaroon lang sila ng interaction dahil sobrang lapit ng mga molecules sa isa't isa. So ulitin ko, kung wala mang electrostatic force produced by the molecule, there will still be an interaction if they are very close with each other. So, ibig sabihin, sobrang um, weak ng interaction. Kasi yung, um, yung pagmumula ng interaction would be um, the very close distance between the two molecules. It is so weak, sobrang weak niya, na i-vibrate mo lang konti yung molecules, initen mo lang konti, you increase the internal vibration, it will cause dispersion already of the interaction. So, sa sobrang weak niya, konting vibrate mo lang ng molecule, mag-separate na yung dalawang molecules. Okay? So, that's the London dispersion force. Ngayon, um, let us explain the kilocalories okay, na nandito. Kung mapapansin nyo, as you go from a polar interaction, dipole-dipole, up to the non-polar interaction, the London dispersion force, makikita nyo na pababa ng pababa yung kilocalorie per mole of the molecule. Mapapansin nyo, pababa ng pababa. Ano ibig sabihin? Ibig sabihin, the energy that is held by the intermolecular force is so weak and it is a function of the polarity of the molecules. So that as you go, as you become progressively non-polar, the force between them becomes smaller. Okay? So for Kisom, please remember, this will take a part in your um, physical pharmacy review also. So if you will see, yung dipole-dipole, the force is relatively higher. So that you need, ito, ito yung interpretation niyan. You need up to 7 kilocalories per mole of applied heat to disintegrate the Kisom force. Okay? You need up to 7 kilocalories per mole of energy to disperse the Kisom interaction. Okay? Mataas-taas. For D-Bice interaction, 
you need at least 3 kilocalories to disperse it. Bakit mas konti? Kasi yung interaction nila, weaker. Why? Because one is a dipole and the other is just an induced dipole. One is polar and the other is non-polar. So weaker. Ito naman, dalawang non-polar, definitely wala kang electrostatic force of interaction. So it's very weak. Counting vibration lang. One kilocalorie lang na didisperse mo. So, ano yung ating common theme? No? Um, kilocalorie is a unit of heat. So that in these solutions, when you apply heat, when you apply it in a controlled way, you can progressively disintegrate a particular type of interaction. Okay, so yun yung ating application. Maybe I need to recap, ano? So recap lang, intermolecular force, also known as va van der Waals or van der Waals. Okay, van der Waals. Meron tayong tatlo, Kisom, dipole, dipole, d by dipole, induced dipole, and London, induced dipole, induced dipole. Can also be interpreted as Kisom, polar, polar, D by polar, non-polar, London, non-polar, non-polar. Okay. Meron pa tayong um, additional intermolecular force of attraction. No? Meron pa tayong additional na intermolecular force of attraction. And this would involve the very polar, no? the very polar molecules. So isa would be you have a charged ion and a polar molecule. So um, examples of these would be um, an, the interaction between a cation, let us say sodium, dispersed in water, interacting with a polar amino acid. Okay, for example, glutamate. You know? So, for example, meron kang amino acid um, um, dissolved in water. Okay, so, um, you imagine the amino acid um, being surrounded by water molecules. Okay? And that amino acid has a polar um, structure. Ibig sabihin, meron kang um, very large na oxygen, um, oxygen grouping. So, um, example would be glutamate kung saan meron kang carboxyl group sa isang end at yung R chain niya meron din carboxyl. So very polar. So that polar amino acid when it interacts with sodium from sodium chloride ano, in the solution, that interaction will be an ion-dipole interaction. Ion-sodium-dipole that would be glutamate. No? So next would be ion induced dipole. Um, ion induced dipole. May naman meron kang ion plus a nonpolar molecule. And that nonpolar molecule will be an induced dipole because that ion will attract electrons towards a particular side of the nonpolar molecule. No? So next would be the hydrogen bond. Very important, okay, na alam nyo yung properties ng hydrogen bond um, because this will also apply in your biochemistry exam, module 2. Okay? So in a hydrogen bond, the free um, accessible hydrogen atoms surrounding a molecule, ah, nagsulat? Ako ba yun? Masya may sulat. Sorry. So, the freely accessible hydrogen atoms in a particular molecule will interact through the hydrogen bond, a type of force, together with an electronegative atom. Okay, so yung electronegative atom the more common ones would be oxygen, fluorine, 
nitrogen and sulfur. Okay, so, papansin nyo, makikita nyo siya sa amino acids. Na? That electronegative atom will attract the electrons in a hydrogen atom that is freely accessible and that force between them would be the hydrogen bond. Okay? The hydrogen bond is present in most macromolecules. So, for example, this is what holds the two strands of DNA together. So that's the hydrogen bond. Next would be ionic bonding. So, yung ionic bonding, similar siya ng concept with the intra molecular ionic interaction, yung dinescribe natin kanina, where there is, recap na lang, a high or a great difference in electronegativity. Ano? So, imagine that occurring outside the molecule together with another molecule. Okay, so, that's the ionic intermolecular force of attraction. Okay. Why yan? Um, meron kaming aberrant question in module 1 na dapat sa module 2. So, ito yung, um, ito yung patunay that the questions in the board exam can transcend modules. No? Hindi siya, uh, kasi um, biochemistry question to, bi sa biochem na siya lalabas. Lalabas din siya sa module 1. So, isang patunay would be, um, they ask the melting characteristics of a gene that contains a lot of guanine-cytosine interactions. So, maraming GC pairs. So, ang tinanong doon, what would be the melting characteristic? Will it be high temperature, high melting point, or low melting point? So, dito, papasok yung understanding niya of the hydrogen bond. So, in the GC pair, there are three hydrogen bonds. And in the AT pair, there are only two hydrogen bonds. Therefore, kapag yung gene contains a lot of GC pairs, it will be progressively harder to melt or separate the strands. So yung gene will have a high melting point. Okay. okay. So now we move to Physical properties of systems. So what is a system? A system, um, it's anything. It's any material placed in an environment. And that entirety will be a system. Ano? So, meron tayong tatlong properties ng isang system. You have additive. Depende kung these properties will depend on um, stacking. Will they stack or are they um, innate or are they dependent on the number of molecules? Excuse me. So, pag sinabi natin additive property, it will depend on the sum. Okay? Additive property, addition, sum will depend on the sum of its individual components. For example, is molecular weight. No? Kung sinabi natin molecular weight, you will have to add up the atomic weights of its constituent atoms. For example, the molecular weight of hydrochloric acid, the molecular weight of hydrochloric acid will depend on the weight of hydrogen, which is 1, and chlorine, which is 35. So that means hydrochloric acid will have an atomic, uh, a molecular weight of 36. So, yan din yung way niya ng pagkuha ng moles, okay, number of moles. So, next would be a constitutive property. So, ang constitutive property, it depends on the molecule, on the compound itself. Wala kang ibang magagawa. Yun na talaga siya. And it's innate or distinct for that particular compound. And it will depend on the arrangement or the orientation of the atoms and of the molecules, for example, in a mixture. So for example, um, that would be, example ng constitutive property, 
um, yun yung mga innate property or intrinsic properties na ating napagkwentohan last time. Um, that would be optical rotation. Ano? When you shine a polarized light, ibig sabihin yung direction ng light rays na linis na ng isang mirror or glass lens such that the direction would be only one, unidirectional. No? So that's a polarized light. When you shine a uh, when you shine a polarized light into a solution, and there is a system that captures um, the refraction of the light. Okay, kung ano yung mga direction ng bending ng light rays, there is a system that captures that, and there is a system that measures the rotation of the light. Is it levo rotatory or dextro rotatory? So tawag natin sa instrument na yon is the polarimeter, ama. So when you see in the polarimeter that light has turned towards the right, that's dextro rotatory. And conversely, if it rotates towards the left, that's levo rotatory. Ano? So optical rotation depends on the material that was dissolved. Hindi siya magde-depend kung marami ba yung nilagay mo o konti lang yung nilagay mo. No? Hindi siya magde-depend doon. For that particular material, it will only turn to the left or it will only turn to the right. Yeah? So that is why for certain medications, um, they will always specify the optical isomer. For example, you have um, libo rotatory, libo rotatory sildenafil. You have dextro rotatory sildenafil, and they will have um, uh, different effects. Okay, um, you have libo rotatory thalidomide. No, patokyan sa board exam. Libo rotatory thalidomide, dextro rotatory thalidomide, and racemic thalidomide. Okay, magkakaiba yung effect. Ano? So, yung dextrorotatory thalidomide, that is associated with focomelia. And the other ones, um, liborotatory thalidomide is not. So, that is why you can use liborotatory thalidomide. That is why you can use liborotatory thalidomide for rheumatologic disorders ano? and for certain um, fungal and parasitic infections but you cannot use ano, dextrorotatory thalidomide especially in a woman who you do not know pregnant pa or hindi. Ano? Kasi pag binigay mo yun, you will have focomelic babies. Walang mga um, Flappy yung appendages niya. No? Penguin-like appendage. Last would be colligative property. So yung colligative properties, ang kanyang extent, yung kanyang degree of the property will depend on the number of solute. Pag konti lang, ano, yung number of solute in the solution, number of particles in the mixture, that colligative property will less likely expose or present itself. Pero kapag marami yung molecules, it will definitely show. Okay. So ulitin ko, additive property will depend on the sum of the constituent of the system. Constitutive property will depend on the material itself. There is nothing you can do about it. It will depend on the material itself. And colligative property will depend not on the sum but on the number of solutes present in the system. So, uh, patok na patok din sa board exam and in module 5 would be the colligative properties. Okay? Colligative properties. Dependent on the number of solute or on the number of particles. First, we will discuss vapor pressure lowering. First, colligative property vapor pressure lowering. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? The addition of a non-volatile solute 
will lower the vapor pressure of a liquid. So, ang ating supposition dito would be you have a container that has a liquid. So, don't worry. Merong tint ng yellow kasi chayan. Okay? Na aking iniinom. So, there is um, a liquid in the container and merong takip such that this system is enclosed. Ano? And naturally, the liquid will tend to escape into the gaseous environment as vapor. Okay? The liquid will tend to escape as vapor as, as long as you enclose the system. So, anong nangyayari? If this is the original system, you have a particular amount of vapor on top. But the moment you add a non-volatile solute, ano ibig sabihin nun? Pagdagdag mo ng isang non-volatile solute, solute na hindi hahalo doon sa vapor sa taas, ibig sabihin nandito na siya sa liquid, it will lower the vapor pressure. So ano yung vapor pressure? Remember yung ating discussion of the kinetic molecular theory of matter. Gases will tend to vibrate and they will tend to collide. And this collision is a perfectly elastic collision. And ang ibig sabihin nun, the gas molecules um, that are present, they will move randomly kahit saan siya pupunta kahit anong direction, sobrang bilis ng movement. When they hit each other, other gaseous molecules, or when they hit the container wall, they will not, take note, perfect elastic collision, they will not lose kinetic energy. Ano? That's a perfect elastic collision. So etong gases na ito, in this system that we are talking about, the collisions that they exhibit are perfectly elastic. When they collide with other gases, they will not lose energy. But instead, the sum of these collisions together with the collision with the wall will create a force that is acted on a particular surface area. And remember, ano yung definition natin of pressure? The definition of pressure is force acted upon a particular surface area. Force over SA, di ba? F over SA. Yan yung ating formula for pressure. And therefore, these gases, they exert a force on a particular surface area. That would be the surface of the liquid and the walls of the container. Okay? So yan yung ating pressure. So, recap lang natin. There are liquid molecules. They will escape into the gaseous environment as vapor. These vapors will collide with each other and with the wall of the container and as well as the surface of the liquid. Because of that force acted upon the surface, it will exhibit pressure. And that pressure is vapor pressure. Kwa yun, kung ano yung definition ng vapor pressure. Ngayon, we factor in the solute that was added. So, if you add, for example, asin, lalagyan mo ng asin to, no? Sodium chloride is a non-volatile solute. Ibig sabihin, it will not escape into the vapor. Nandun na siya sa liquid. Anong nangyayari? the sodium chloride particles, the ions, or even the crystal lattice of sodium chloride. Anong mangyayari? Imagine this is your sodium molecule or your sodium chloride crystal. Surrounding it would be the solvent. Ano? And, nandit, and nandito sa... Ang layan na ng aking illustration. And nandito sa taas yung interface ng inyong liquid and vapor. Okay. Yung solvent molecules, nandito. The solvent molecules can escape as vapor. Yung solvent molecules, once you add the non-volatile solute, will tend to 
surround or cuff, okay? It will tend to surround the solute that you added such that it will be attracted towards the solute and instead of vaporizing, you know, instead of going into the gaseous environment, they will tend to stick together with the solute. You know? So, in simple terms, nanakawen ng solute yung solvent so that the solvent will not escape as vapor. And when the number of vapor molecules decrease, the collisions with other vapor molecules and with the wall decrease. Therefore, vapor pressure will decrease you know, once you add the solute. Why is it a colligative property? Because the more solute you add, the less vapor will exist and the more vapor pressure will lower. Okay? So when equilibrium is reached, vapor exerts a vapor pressure. Explain na natin. Um, board exam question, what will be your measurement of vapor pressure lowering? Paano natin i-estimate kung gano'n nakababa yung vapor pressure? That will be Routh's law. Routh's law. Ulitin ko, vapor pressure lowering, Routh's law. Sa pa, vapor pressure lowering, Routh's law. Last one, vapor pressure lowering, Routh's law. Sabi ng Routh's law, lowering of a vapor, of vapor pressure of a solvent is equal to the product of the mole fraction of the solute and vapor pressure of the solvent. Okay. Um, let's try to understand the formula. You know? So, yung vapor pressure, saan ang aking pointer? Laser pointer. Yung vapor pressure ng ating solvent is this one. And this is the mole fraction of the solute. Ano yung ibig sabihin yan? Tingnan nyo na ang kanilang relationship ay directly related. Ibig sabihin, mas bababa yung vapor pressure kapag mataas yung mole fraction at kapag mataas yung ating vapor pressure ng solvent. So explain natin. The one that relates to the number of solute will be your mole fraction. So moles, di ba, that will be a unit of number of particle. So you're going to utilize Avogadro's number there. So Kung mas marami yung moles, mas marami yung particles. Okay, so you get me? As you increase the number of particles, as you increase the mole fraction of the solute, vapor pressure will lower. Okay. What about this one? The vapor pressure of the solvent. If your solvent is not vaporizable, if it is not volatile enough, you know, if your solvent is not very volatile, ibig sabihin, yung system mo, konti lang yung vapor na nasa taas kasi hindi nga siya volatile. So, if you add more solute in that non-volatile solvent, the vapor pressure, konti na siya in the first place. And therefore, if you add solute, hindi na siya masyadong bababa. Kasi konti na siya in the first place. Okay? So, ulitin ko, Roth's Law will tell you the relationship of the extent of vapor pressure lowering in relation to the volatility of your solvent. If very volatile, it will lower more. If non-volatile, it will um, lower less. And the mole fraction, the amount of particles of solute in that so in that solution okay? more solute the more vapor pressure will lower okay? next okay boiling point elevation so um patok sa board exam they will use the synonym ebuluscopia ano boiling point elevation ebuluscopia 
So, kaya ang ating boiling point constant is ebullioscopic constant. Other name of the... Please take note, for some question, other name of your boiling point constant or boiling point elevation constant would be the ebullioscopic constant. Ebullioscopic constant, boiling point elevation constant. Okay? Another related principle sa inyong boiling point elevation um, is vapor pressure lowering. So ano ibig sabihin nun? Yung dinescribe ko na interaction kanina, it will also explain boiling point elevation. Ano? So remember that for a substance, for a mixture, for a solution to boil, Ano? for a liquid to boil, its vapor pressure must equate the atmospheric pressure. Ulitin ko, very important, for a substance, for a solution, for a mixture to boil, its vapor pressure must equate atmospheric pressure. So, remember that the solvent molecules for it to volatilize, it must escape the liquid system and go into the interface and go into the gaseous system. No? So from liquid system to the interface into the gaseous system. No? So yun yung ating principle of boiling and vaporizing. So ang ating principle kanina, once you add a solute, vapor pressure will decrease. Bakit? Kasi ma-attract nung solute yung solvent molecules and they will have a lesser tendency to form vapor. And therefore, let us connect that with boiling point elevation. If you add a solute, it will tend to decrease production of the vapor and therefore, vapor pressure will not reach equality with atmospheric pressure. Ano ibig sabihin? Hindi ka makaka-form ng vapor and therefore, hindi siya mag-equal yung pressure with atmospheric pressure. And therefore, boiling point will have a higher threshold. Kailangan mo mas mataas na energy para mag-escape yung solvent as vapor at tumaas yung vapor pressure so that it will equal atmospheric pressure and therefore boil later on. Okay? Ngayon, addition of solute, vapor pressure lowering, vapor in the atmosphere will decrease, vapor pressure will decrease, boiling point will be elevated because you need more vapor now by addition of more heat, boiling, so that it will boil as it equals atmospheric pressure. So, ano yung ulitin ko? Very important for physical pharmacy also. So, mag-imbak na tayo ng knowledge dito. Ha? Solute, kukunin yung solvent, kukunti yung vapor, kukunti yung vapor pressure, you will need more vapor so that the pressure will equal atmospheric pressure so that it will boil. Okay? So, ang ating formula, please remember, will also come out in module 5. Boiling point elevation is equal to the ebullioscopic constant times molality. No? Boiling point elevation is equal to the ebullioscopic constant which is determined by the particular molecule times the molality. This is an expanded version of that which is in the top. So yung molality ninyo, ito yan. Okay? So let's take a five-minute break and then we will have the next hour. Five-minute break.
Hello? Nag-wait ako sa... Ayan. Go signal na to, no? Yung recording. Sige, sabihin hindi na. Teka lang ha, set up ko lang ulit yung ano. Isa na ako. Sige, slow. Easy point the pressure. Share screen, ano? Share screen. Oh, dumami kayo! <laughs> Sige, meron namang ano, recording. So, ano lang. Re uh, review nyo na lang. Okay. So, kanina, ano na yung mga colligative properties na ating napag-usapan? That would be vapor pressure lowering and the related boiling point elevation. So, sa vapor pressure lowering, yung ating determinant formula would be Rolt's Law. And sa, sorry, may aso. At sa boiling point elevation, we're going to use the ebullioscopic constant, no? So, dito naman, kapag freezing point depression, the constant that we're going to use would be the cryoscopic constant. Freezing point depression, we're going to use the cryoscopic constant or the freezing point depression constant. So, ang ating value na freezing point depression constant would be 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. Ano? Kf equals 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. Please remember, okay? Please remember. Kasi sometimes they will not give the constant during the board exam. So dapat memoriado yan. Um, isang tip ko sa inyo would be to have an index card of all the constants. For example, um, for example would be the gallic acid constants, no? Sa so, the boric acid constants. So, um, pakisulat nun. Gawa kayo ng index card. Lagay niyo to doon. The cryoscopic constant. So, please also remember the formula which is similar to the um, ebullioscopic formula. So, you have the change in freezing point. So, delta Tf is equal to the cryoscopic constant times molality. No? Times molality. So, um, yung pinaka-toxic na um, board exam question for fee farm for me was the computation of the um, cryoscopic constant of tears. So, yung luha, ano yung um, freezing point nun. So, ang nangyari, mayroong luha, kinapture yung luha, and then, dinetermine yung cryoscopic um, constant and your freezing point depression, and then you're going to choose which drug was in the tears. So, ganun yung pinaka mahirap na question na na-encounter ko sa fee farm on freezing point depression. May luha, na-determine yung freezing point depression, then pipiliin mo as the exam taker kung ano yung gamot na nasa luha. So, sobrang toxic. So, um, Freezing point would be the temperature at which there is equilibrium between your solid, your crystalline phase, and your liquid, no? Or the fluid phase. So, in a constant pressure. So, in general, yung solutions natin, they have lower freezing point 
than the pure solvent. So for example, if you get pure water through either distillation or um, through synthesis via um, separate hydrogen and oxygen, um, electros, um, electric fusion, um, you can form pure water. And if you get the freezing point of pure water, which is at perfectly zero degrees Celsius, you're going to find a difference between the freezing point of tap water, which has a lot of ions dissolved in it. So there mga calcium, magnesium, the other anion sulfates, um, the ammoniums, nandun sa tap water. Mapapansin niya dahil maraming electrolytes and um, solutes in tap water, it will have a lower freezing point. Hindi siya ma-freeze at exactly zero degrees Celsius. It will freeze at a negative um, value of uh, Celsius. Um, that is the re that is the reason why that is the reason why if you uh, try to sell ice cream, kung mapapansin nyo, yung tube of ice cream, um, yung dirty ice cream, meron siyang salt on the ice surrounding it. No? Kung mapapansin nyo, merong tube and then may ice, then may mga asin dyan. So, for example, na, na, na contaminate nung um, sorbetero, paglagay sa ice cream mo, may mga maaalat konti kasi may asin yung paligid. Bakit may asin yung paligid? So that um, the freezing point of the water there would be lower. So ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Kahit um, tumaas yung temperature noong system, hindi pa rin siya magme-melt kasi lower yung freezing point niya. So um, application would be salt is spread on the roads to melt ice and the board exam question here would be the use of ethylene glycol as antifreeze. Ethylene glycol as antifreeze. Last time, ethylene glycol as antifreeze. So, ang inyong solute there would be ethylene glycol. Yung ethylene glycol, siya yung nagsicirculate sa likod ng inyong refrigerator. At siya din yung nagsicirculate sa likod ng aircon. And in the temperate countries, kapag mayroong snowstorm, para hindi mag yung um, road or para hindi magmelt yung yellow sa gilid ng road at hindi maging madulas yung road sa sprayhan ng inyong government um, um, ice surrounding the road and in the road ng ethylene glycol para hindi siya magmelt at maging madulas at magkaroon ng aksidente. Okay? So, um, similar yung ating concept um, with vapor pressure lowering, and boiling point elevation. When you add a solute in the solution, the freezing point will depress. Ibig sabihin, it will become, it will freeze at a cooler temperature. Bakit? Kasi for freezing to occur, there has to be minimal vibration of the molecules. No? For freezing to occur, there has to be minimal vibration of the solvent molecules throughout the solution or throughout the system. If you add a solute, it will attract, no? it will attract the solvent molecules and it will create a greater or a larger compound or molecule, aggregate molecule. Yung mas malaking aggregate molecule na yun, mahuhulog siya pababa. No? Instead of the solvent molecules suspending and not moving, that aggregate molecule composed of the solvent and the solute that you added will become more bulky, bulkier, and it will fall towards the bottom. And therefore, it will disrupt the, um, the freezing lattice or the ice lattice in the case of water. So, hindi magpo-form yung ice dahil ma-disrupt siya ng nalalaglag ng mga malalaking molecules. Next would be osmotic pressure. So um, osmotic pressure is very important, um, especially in the clinical scenario. So in yung, sa inyong module 3, 
which is clinical pharmacy, sometimes there will be osmotic pressure computations for plasma. No? So, um, example, in a diabetic individual, sobrang daming glucose, mataas yung osmotic pressure non. So, that will also entail the pathophysiology of your polyuria, polydipsia. Ano? Bakit inom ng inom ng tubig? Kasi mataas yung osmotic pressure nung inyong plasma. So, anyway, osmotic pressure is just the pressure that prevents osmosis. No? It's the pressure that prevents osmosis. So, yung osmosis, um, the question in the boards can be this simple. What is osmosis? Pwede ganun ka simple yung question. So, please guys, wag na nating maliin dahil one point na yon. Movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane where there is a movement of um, water from a low concentration of the solution to a high concentration of the solution. So, kabalik taran siya nung inyong normal diffusion where movement will be from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Dito sa osmosis, yung tubig yung gagalaw. In osmosis, yung tubig yung gagalaw. So it will move from a region kung saan maraming tubig papunta sa region kung saan konti lang ang tubig. So yung region na maraming tubig, that would be the region of low solute concentration to a region of high solute concentration kung saan konti lang ang tubig. So, um, based on osmotic pressure, we have three definitions. And our basis here would be plasma. When you say isotonic, the pressure that is exerted by the solutes in the solution is equal to the pressure exerted of, by the solutes in the solution, which is plasma. So, ulitin ko, yung plasma solution din siya. Mayroong mga nakadissolve doon. Your salts, your wastes, your glucose, your gases, ano? So, ibig sabihin yung plasma solution din. Pag sinabi natin isotonic, yung osmotic pressure ng inyong drug solution is equal to the osmotic pressure in normal plasma. So, um, in terms of normal saline, ano, in terms of salt solution, that will be 0.9% sodium chloride. So yung 0.9% sodium chloride, ibig sabihin, in, tama, in, one liter, in one liter of sodium chloride, there will be, there will be 9 grams of sodium Chloride. In one liter of NSS, there will be 9 grams of sodium chloride. Yung osmotic pressure na yun, yun yung osmotic pressure ng tubig na nasa dugo. Such that when you give NSS, there will be no net movement of water. Hindi lalabas ang tubig within the cell towards the plasma. So basically, you're just repleting um, blood volume, no? You're just repleting uh, plasma volume kapag nagbigay ka ng NSS. So, um, other terms in relation to plasma osmolarity or osmotic pressure of plasma would be hypertonic. Ibig sabihin, yung drug solution mo, mas mataas yung osmotic pressure kaysa sa plasma. So, ano mangyayari? Once you give the drug solution, the water inside the cells will exit the cell and go into plasma so that it will normalize the osmotic pressure. So, ano mayayari nun? Paglabas ng water from the cell, the cells will shrink. They will crenate ano? if you give a hypertonic solution. Hypotonic naman kabalik taran. Kapag ikaw ay nag-inject ng hypotonic drug solution, it will cause movement of water from your solution 
into the cell. And therefore, these cells will swell and they will lie. Sasabong sila. Sasabong lang. No? So, for our computation of osmotic pressure, we're going to utilize a derivation of the ideal gas law, which is PV equals nRT. So, kung papansin nyo, similar yung ating formula. Pi V equals nRT, where pi is the osmotic pressure of the solution in terms of atmosphere. Ano? In terms of atmosphere, so unit of pressure times volume in liters. And please take note, you should memorize the gas constant, which is R. Please memorize the gas constant, which is R. So magkakaiba yung value ng number depende sa unit na ginamit. But for our purposes, we are going to stick with the SI unit, which is liters atmosphere over mole Kelvin. Liters atmosphere over mole Kelvin. Please memorize that it is 0 0.08205. 0 0.08205. Okay? So, what will be our application here? In physical pharmacy, and sometimes in module 1 questions, they will give a drug solution with particular values, number of moles of the drug, and then liters of the solution, and then in volume, liters of the solution, and then you're going to compute the osmotic pressure. Once you have determined the osmotic pressure, they will ask in the exam, how much salt, sodium chloride, should I add to this solution so that it becomes isotonic or isoosmotic with plasma. Remember that? Kasi, ang gagawin natin in the hospital pharmacy, kapag kayo na ay nasa hospital pharmacy, nagkatrabaho na kayo in the hospital, in the compounding section, the drugs available for IV infusion will have different osmotic pressures. Hindi sila isotonic. Ano? So, ang gagawin mo as the clinical pharmacist, as the hospital pharmacist, as the compounding pharmacist, you're going to compute the amount of salt you're going to add so that the drug solution becomes isotonic. And therefore, pwede na siyang gamitin ng nurses um, for infusion. Ano? So, yun yung application. So, ano na yung mga na-describe natin na colligative properties? Number one would be vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure. The question in the board exam can be as simple as, which of the following is not a colligative property? Ganun lang siya. Which of the following is not a colligative property? So, dapat alam nyo kung ano yung mga colligative properties. Those would be vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure. Okay? Right now, let's proceed to the gas loss. So, meron tayong, um, lo these are laws that will help us understand how gases behave. Okay? These are laws that help us understand or predict the behavior of gases. So, um, what's special here would be the other name of Boyle's Law. So, ang alam lang ng mga people would be Boyle's Law. But, um, together with Boyle, meron siyang co-scientist na nag-discover, that's Mariot. Okay? So Boyle's Law is also known as Mariot's Law. Boyle's Law, the same as Mariot's Law. It will tell us the relationship. We're talking of gases here, ha? It tells, 
it tells you the relationship between volume of a gas and the pressure exerted on that gas. Okay? So remember, ang ating kinetic molecular theory of matter. Gases are in chaotic movement. No? Galaw lang sila ng galaw kahit saan. And when they collide, that's perfectly elastic. Ngayon, there are great distances between gas molecules. Yung distances between gas molecules sobrang laki. And therefore, theoretically, if we're able to exert compression on that gas system, pwede natin silang i-compress at ipitin by application of pressure. The distances between them will become shorter. No? Mas magiging mas malapit sila sa isa't isa. And so, what is the relationship there? When you add more pressure, when you compress a gas more, its overall volume will decrease. Okay? When you compress a gas more, its overall volume will decrease. Kasi pinagdikit mo sila. So therefore, our formula there, focus tayo nung, focus tayo ng nasa right muna. Okay? The pressure applied on a gas, the pressure of the gas, is inversely related to its volume. Okay? Nasa baba yung V. Pwede din natin siyang interpret this way. The volume of a gas is inversely related to pressure. So, ano ibig sabihin? When I increase the pressure of a gas, in a closed system, ha, its volume will decrease. When I decrease the pressure exerted on a gas, its volume will increase. So, ito ang ating tip and trick. No? Ito, sobrang toxic memorizing ito. Ano? Sobrang toxic nito. And pag magbo-board exam ka, sobrang limited lang nung, <laughs> nung kaya ng utak. Ano? Sobrang limited lang ng kaya ng utak. So, kailangan maghanap tayo ng way na madederive natin to. We just memorize the simple ones and we derive the more difficult ones so that we save space. So, for Boyle's Law, remember, Boyle's Law, pressure and volume. And then we remember, if I exert pressure on a gas, it will decrease in size or volume. Kasi the gas molecules will compress. The distances between them will compress. Therefore, if I exert high pressure on a gas, its volume will decrease. Kasi kinompress mo. So, pwede mo nang, based sa definition ng law, Boyle's law, pwede mo nang sabihin, P is inversely related to V. No? P is inversely related to V. So, nakuha, alam mo yung definition, sinulat mo yung mathematical relationship. Pag nakuha mo na yung mathematical relationship, ano, this one, you just perform algebra. I-algebra mo lang yun siya. So that you isolate K. How do you isolate K? So, um, K would be equal to P and V. So, teka lang, sulat natin um, para makita ninyo. Okay. I'll get word. Teka lang ah, pag-derive. Kasi this is a very important skill. Dahil pagbabalik ta rin nila yung mga wording ng inyong problems in the board exam. So, baliktad yung wording, ano? So, kaya kailangan alam nyo yung definition, you're able to write the mathematical relationship and you derive the form. Ganun lang. Those are the easy steps there. New share. I will share the document. Kita yung document? Yes, sir. Kita, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, angat ko. Yan. 
So, follow, follow nyo lang yung document, ha? So, Boyle's Law, alam natin, as pressure increases, volume decreases. Ano? So, ang ating relationship there would be P is equal to K over V. Ano? Yan yung ating relationship. Now, if we're going to isolate K, ano? Um, ibig sabihin, si K, ita transfer nat, i-retain natin siya sa side na to, at si V, dilipat natin sa side na to. So, that will be P, V equals K. Ano? And when we are computing for Boyle's Law, the problem will tell us at this particular pressure, ito yung volume niya. Ngayon, babaguhin ko yung pressure niya. What will be the volume then? So therefore, we have to equate the two constants. So, ang mangyayari there would be K1, ito yung state noong gas originally. We're going to equate it with K2, the conditions of the gas after you change the pressure. So therefore, P1, V1, so kung titignan nyo, ito siya, will be equal to P2, V2. Okay, kuha nyo yan, that's Boyle's Law. So anong ginawa natin? We just derived the relationship based on the definition. So Boyle's Law, as pressure increases, volume decreases, we write the mathematical formula, and then we isolate K and get this one. And sa two conditions ng gas, K1 is equal to K2. So again, ano yung ating um, other name of Boyle's Law? Mariotte's Law. Boyle's Law, Mariotte's Law. Pressure and volume of a gas. Pressure increase, volume decrease. Pressure decrease, volume increase. Next would be Charles' law. So Charles' law will tell us the relationship of temperature and volume of a gas. The relationship of wrong apostrophe ko. The relationship of temperature and volume of a gas. Ngayon, balik tayo sa kinetic molecular theory. Ano? Sa kinetic molecular theory, sabi natin, yung state ng isang system, solid, liquid, or gas, will depend on the movement of the molecules. The state of a system, solid, liquid, or gas, will depend on the movement of the molecules of that system. If it moves less, solid. Moves more, liquid. Moves the most, gas. Therefore, we focus on the gas. And that will also apply there. If your gas will move more, its volume will increase. Why? Because as it moves more, it will expand. The entire gas will expand as it moves more. Okay, kuha yun. So, how do we make the gas molecules move more? Paano natin sila pabibilising gumalaw? That will be via the application of heat. And therefore, meron ka ng relationship ngayon ng temperature, which is a measure of heat, and volume. So, as you increase the temperature, there will be an increase in the total heat of the system and therefore, the gas molecules of that system will move more and therefore, its volume will increase. So, anong relationship natin? As temperature increases, volume will increase. No? So how do we write that? So temperature is directly related to volume. Temperature is directly related to volume. Ngayon, 
magde-derive na naman tayo ng k, ano? So, k, if we do our algebra, k will be equal to t over v. Therefore, um, ganun din ang ating relationship sa mga problems. The problem will tell us at this temperature, this will be the volume of the gas. Ngayon, if I will increase the temperature, what will be the new volume of the gas? No? So, ganun yung mga questions natin on Charles' law. So, we can um, safely derive the formula by equating the conditions of the gas originally, K1, and the new condition of the gas as you change the temperature, K2. No? So, K1 equals K2. So, easy lang din yan. T1 over V1, which is this one. Kuha nyo to, kita nyo to. Is equal to T2 over V2. So, that is Charles' law. Ano? So, kita nyo yung process. We first define the law. We then determine the relationship. Then, we write a formula. And we derive the formula. That, that should be the way. Para konti lang memorize natin. Next would be, ano yung next law natin? Um, Gay-Lussac's law. So, anong sabi ni Gay-Lussac's law? Gay-Lussac's law said that, says that, as the temperature of a gas system increases, pressure will also increase. As temperature increases, pressure will also increase. Bakit? Balik na naman tayo sa kinetic molecular theory of matter or of gases. As the temperature increases, the heat of the system, yung init, um, which is the internal energy of the system, will also increase. As the heat of the system increases, the kinetic energy of these molecules will also increase. As the kinetic energy of these gas molecules increase, they will move more and they will collide more. And we also remember, when they collide, they do so in a perfectly elastic manner. No energy is lost. And that force of collision is applied on the walls of the container. And therefore, that will generate pressure. Okay? So, balik tayo. As the temperature increase, the movement will be increased. The collisions will increase and therefore pressure will also increase. That is Gay-Lussac's law. Okay? Gay-Lussac's law, high temperature, high pressure. Therefore, ano yung ating relationship? As the temperature of the gas increases, it is directly proportional or related to the pressure of that system. And therefore, when we isolate K, we will have K equals T over P. Or pwede then the other way around, K equals T over T. Pwede mo siyang pagbalik ka rin. But remember, ito yung very important guys. If one side you write K, um, ah, if you write P over T, Dapat yung kabilang side, P over T rin, ha? Bawal magbaliktad. Hindi pwedeng P over T dito. Then dito, T over P. GG na yung exam niya ha? Dapat, same yung nasa taas, same yung nasa baba. Bawal magkabaliktad. Or else. No, or else. <laughs> K1 equals K2. Okay? Therefore, similar with Charles' law, P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. 
Okay? Pwede din, or kung uunahin mo yung temperature sa taas, T1 over T1 is equal to T2 over T2. Okay? Very good. <laughs> um, teka lang. Uh, chat. Ngayon lang ba to? Sir, you can write po sa screen ng Zoom. Punta po kay sa view options sa annotate po. Okay. Pero check ko lang guys kung na nakuha ninyo, kung napanood niyo ba yung sinusulat ko sa Microsoft Word. Opo, so Papanood yeah. niyo ba yun? Ha? Yes. Okay. So, may record naman yun sa video, ano? Opo. Okay. Sige, at least nakuha yun. Kasi dynamic kasi yung process eh. Pwede po sa mouse para mag-draw. Ah, okay. Sige, hindi <laughs> kasi ako masyadong ano eh. Pero at least naki send ko na lang yung ano derivations. Um, let's go back to meeting controls, new share. Kailangan na hihirapan ako eh. Aha. So check ko lang na bumalik na siya dun sa freezing point depression. So, kanina, we already described um, three laws. Teka lang. Bakit iba yung ano? Hide the center view. Uh, stop share. Teka lang guys, ha? nag ano ako. Nahirapan ako mag... Control. So ngayon, nasa gas loss ba yung na nakikita nyo? Opo. Okay. Um, slide show. And then... So, have you guys, ha, hindi ako masyadong ano eh. Magaling sa mga ganito. Show to center view. Ayan. So, ideal gas law yung nakikita nyo na slide. Opo. Okay, yeah. Sige. Recap, uh, ano tayo? Kanina, na-describe na natin yung tatlong laws. Boyle's Law, Pressure Increase, Volume Decrease, Charles Law, Temperature Increase, Volume Increase, and Gay-Lussac's Law, Temperature Increase, Pressure Increase. Ano? Yun yung mga relationships. Ngayon, um, kung kanina ang ating pinagbabasehan sa volume ng isang sa volume and pressure ng isang gas ay kung gaano kabilis yung galaw ng molecules, particularly that's in Charles law and Gay-Lussac's law, ang pinagbabasehan natin gaano kabilis yung galaw, ano? And in Boyle's law yung pinagbabasehan natin Ano yung distance ng mga gas molecules? Ngayon, sa ideal gas law, no, pinagsama-sama yun sila at dinagdag natin yung factor kung gaano kadami yung gas molecules. Ano? Sa ideal gas law, we are looking at the contribution of the number of gas molecules towards the volume and the pressure 
of that gas system. Ano naman siya? Logical na kung dadamihan ko yung number ng gas molecules, mas malaki din dapat yung volume ng gas. Mas mataas din dapat yung pressure ng gas. So, um, we use to describe the number of gas molecules letter N. The small letter N. That's Avogadro's number. No? Avogadro's number N. Laser pointer, letter N. Diba? Yung Avogadro's number, that's a fixed number of particles. So, ibig sabihin, fixed number na 6.023 to the power, times 10 to the power of 23. Ano? So, um, ibig sabihin, those are the number of gas molecules in letter N. Ano? So, if you increase, ito yung tingnan nyo, relationships tayo, if you increase the number of molecules, pressure and volume will increase. If you increase the temperature of the gas, pressure and volume will increase. Ano? So, um, when you remember the gas constant R. When you remember the gas constant R, it is always assumed, it is always assumed that this constant was determined at standard temperature and pressure. Please remember standard temperature and pressure values. Ano yung standard temperature? Ano yung standard pressure? Ano yung standard volume? Because kahit hindi man siya tanungin sa board exam, you need um, directly, kailangan nyo siyang alam to answer some questions. You know? Especially in module 5. But in the board exam, the question can be as simple as, what is the standard pressure? The one atmosphere. What is the standard temperature? This is at 0 Celsius. What is the standard volume? 22.4 liters. The question can be as simple as that. And that will give you already one point. <laughs> so, please, wag kalimutan. And if you will recall, now if you will observe, the real gas equation, also known as van der Waals equation, dami ng contribution niya, is just a derivation of your PV equals nRT, ideal gas law. So yung real gas law is a derivation of the ideal gas law. But here we factor the correction. No? Here we factor a correction. Why? Kasi kailangan natin idagdag yung value of internal pressure. Kasi yung mga gas molecules kahit wala kang binago sa temperature nila, kahit wala kang binago sa volume nila, ano, they have pressure and volume in themselves. So, um, sa real gas law, pinafactor in yung contribution sa pressure and volume ng gas molecules themselves. Kaya meron kang correction. So, AN squared is your internal pressure per mole and nd is the incompressibility so remember gas molecules are compressible because there is a distance between two molecules so pag nag-apply ka ng pressure pwede yung dumikit compressible but there will come a time na sobrang compressed na sila you can't compress anymore so that is the factor of incompressibility fina factor in siya sa Real gas law. So, parang kung i-remember nyo, ideal gas law. Oh, ideal. Sinactor in natin yung number of moles. But real gas law, let's be real, guys. Hindi naman natin makocompress mako lahat ng gas into an hanggang mawala sila. Hindi, hindi pwedeng ganun. Ano? May incompressibility. 
and these gas molecules have their own volume and pressure. So we need to factor in those. Let's be real of the ideal gas. So yun yung aking um, memory aid. So sinasabi ko sa self ko, let's be real of what is ideal. No, let's be real of what is ideal. So ibig sabihin nun, yung real gas law is a derivation of the ideal gas law. So kung hindi mo to memorize, kasi my questions, they're just asking you of the formula. Eh. What is the formula of the real gas law? The question can be that simple. Let's be real of what is ideal. So that will guide you na yung real gas law is a derivation of the ideal gas law. Okay. So this is my last slide for this evening, um, for our two hours. So Rolt's Law, kanina we described Rolt's Law in vapor pressure lowering. So in gases also, remember that vapors are gases. Therefore, to describe vapor pressure, we're also describing a gas. Therefore, Rolt's Law is also a gas law. So, um, this one is Henry's Law of Gas Solubility. So, when we say gas solubility, sinasabi natin, gaano ba, ano ba ang tendency ng isang gas na nandito sa taas na madissolve dito sa baba, sa liquid portion. No? What is the tendency of the gas in here to dissolve in this liquid portion. So that is Henry's law of gas solubility. That is described by Henry's law of gas solubility. Kung saan, if I apply pressure on the gas, kapag nag-apply ako ng pressure here, the gases will dissolve more here. Kasi they are going to, they are going to be compressed into the liquid interface and therefore disperse or immerse in the liquid interface or in the liquid system. So ulitin ko, pressure exerted on the gas is directly related to solubility. Ano? You can dissolve a gas by applying pressure on it. This is the principle of LPGs. Ano? Yung liquefied petroleum gas, those are gases. But remember, pag inalog niyo yung LPG, may liquid sa loob. Why? Because those gases are compressed and they are contained in the LPG. Nakompress, na, 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 na compress, naging liquid, sinil off so that the pressure is maintained. Ano? So liquid siya. Kaya pag inalog mo, may liquid sa loob. And when you connect the LPG into the Bunsen burner or your um, burner sa bahay, the liquid will escape as a gas. No? Babalik siya into petroleum gas. Next would be Dalton's law of partial pressure. Dalton's law of partial pressure will tell us that yung total pressure of a gas mixture will be equal to the pressures exerted by the component gases. Ulitin ko, Dalton's law of partial pressures will tell us that the total pressure of a gas system, of a gas mixture, is equal to the partial pressure exerted by the individual gases in that mixture. For example, our ambient air, etong hanging ating hinihinga, the pressure is one atmosphere. That one atmosphere is because of the individual pressures exerted by the component gases, which are nitrogen, oxygen, and a little bit of the other gases, helium, carbon dioxide. No? Um, those individual gases will exert partial pressures and that total pressure, ambient air pressure, is one atmosphere. That's Dalton's law of partial pressures. 
Okay, so ito yung ating formula. Yung total is equal to pressure of gas 1, pressure of gas 2, pressure of gas 3, and so on. So, Avogadro's number, Avogadro's gas law will tell us the relationship of um, the number of moles of a gas. Gano kadami yung gas itself? And ano yung relationship niya with volume? So, sabi natin kanina, kung mas marami yung gas molecules, it will follow na it will occupy more space mas mataas yung volume ng gas na yun. Kasi mas marami yung moles ng gas. So, mas malaki yung volume. Um, I need to show the derivation. Ah, pwede ako magsulat. Try natin yung sulat. 10. So, sabi natin, yung number of mo pangit-pangit, ano, Number of moles is directly related to the volume. Why? Kasi kung mas marami nga yung molecules na yun, it will take up more volume. Therefore, if we isolate K, sorry guys, nag, um, nag struggle. <laughs> that will be N equals over V. No? That is our isolation of K. So, pwede din, pwede mo din gawin V over N. And therefore, if at circumstance 1, we will label that as K1, A1 N1 over V1 K2 So sasabihin ng question sa inyo Ito yung volume ng gas nung ito yung number of moles niya Ngayon, alamin nyo kung ano yung new volume ng gas pag dinagdaga natin yung number of moles. So, ganun yung question for Avogadro's gas law. Plus N2 over V2. So, if you're going to equate K1 and K2, you will have this formula. Yan. So, yan yung ating Alam mo, <laughs> Okay, sinulat ko lang pala yung nandito. So, um, that is our derivation of Avogadro's number. Ngayon, um, last for our gas laws and last for this lecture is Graham's Law of Effusion. Ngayon, alamin natin kung ano yung pinagkaiba ng diffusion and effusion. Pag sinabi nating diffusion, yan yung movement ng gases due to random molecular motion and collision. No? Dahil nagbabanggaan, dahil gumagalaw, they will spread from a region of low concentration of gas to a re to a, from a region of high concentration sorry, of gas to a region of low concentration of gas. Yun yung movement niya. That's diffusion. Ngayon, imagine nyo, effusion, take note guys, effusion is just diffusion through a small opening. Ulitin ko, effusion is diffusion of a gas exiting through a small opening. Ano? Ibig sabihin, may kipot at doon nagdi-diffuse yung gas. That's effusion. So, when we say Graham's law of effusion, sinasabi nito na yung effusion ay inversely related to the square root of density. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Kung mas mabigat yung gas, no? ang ibig sabihin lang yan, 
kung mas mabigat yung gas, mas mabagal siyang gumalaw. And so, kung mas mabagal siyang gumalaw, mas mabagal siyang magdi-diffuse. Mas mabagal siyang mag e fuse And so, sa sobrang bagal niya, kailangan mong um, i-factor in yung square root. Ano? So yung normal na bagal niya, ita times 2 mo yung bagal niya. Uh, kung, ano yung dens- kung ano yung bigat niya, yung density niya, you multiply that by 2. And that is how much you will decrease diffusion. Ano? So, yun yung ating Graham's Law of Effusion. Mas mabagal, mas mabigat, mas, um, mas mabagal yung ating diffusion and effusion. So, ipagko-compare niyan, sino ba yung mga mababagal natin na gases? Methane is heavier than carbon dioxide. Therefore, in a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide in a container, and you open the container, carbon dioxide will escape first and then methane. So, yun yung ating Graham's Law of Effusion. So, thank you for um, listening ulit. Ano? Um, it's already 7 and then we will meet tomorrow again for uh, four hours. Okay? So, um, tips for your review. Study. First, try to understand and then memorize. Never the other way around. First, understand and then memorize. If you get tired, Take a break. Wag sagarin. If you get tired, take a break. Never sacrifice your sleep because in sleep, there is consolidation you know, of memory. So, kahit man aral ka ng aral, pag hindi yan nagko-consolidate, di mo yan magagamit. Okay? So, matulog ng sakto. Um, for me, Pwede pang i-sacrifice yung exercise kaysa sa sleep. Ano? Pero if you can exercise, that will be better. So, thank you for listening. See you next time.